All right, this is the last of our review material for hypothesis testing. This time, for the last section, we're going to deal with uh, hypothesis testing for uh, variance and standard deviation. Let me write down the steps. Step one, verify. that the sample is random and the population is normally distributed. Uh, these things will all be assumed in the examples I do, so I won't bother with those. But in general, you got to keep your eyes out for something like that. Step two, we do as usual state H naught and HA. List the level of significance. In this, we're going to make use of degrees of freedom again, and it will also equal n minus 1. Determine the critical values. In the chi-squared table, The test statistic will be the following. Of course, S will be the sample standard deviation. Sigma will be the proposed population standard deviation. And then make the decision. All right, well, let's do some examples to show how this works. You'll see it's it, the setup is just like anything else. All the other ones we did, except the details are a little bit different. So let's take a look at a claim. Here we have sigma squared is greater than or equal to 8.5. So this question is the claim is about the uh, variance, the population variance being at least 8.5. Here we have a sample. This is what we got. We have a sample variance was equal to 7.45, and the number of subjects was 23. We went to test the claim at alpha equals 0.05. And as I've done all the other ones, I'll do this classical method first, you know, the one that has uh, rejection regions and such. Let me state my H naught and H A. So sigma squared is greater than or equal to 8.5. That's the claim. And then we have H sub A is that sigma squared is less than 8.5. So because of that, we have ourselves a left tailed test. So one thing you want to do here, let me let me draw the picture here because it, it, the curve is not quite the same as the other curves that we've been doing. It starts at zero, zero, but then it goes and does this kind of stuff like so but then it's like that. This is the chi-squared curve. And since I said a left tail test, that means that this region right here, right there, that will be alpha equals 0 0.05. And so now I need to figure out what this number is down here based on the table. So let's go ahead and grab that table. All right, our degrees of freedom is not 23, but it's actually 23 minus 1, so it's 22. 
Now, when you're dealing with these, what they list in this thing are is the amount of area to the right of the marking itself. So, for example, if I look at 0.22 and I look at 8.643, if I go to the top, it's 0.995. That means that 1 minus that, which is 0 0.005, is to the left. So it's a good idea to draw a picture of this since uh, we don't have the same symmetry we had on the other problems. I needed an alpha equals 0 0.05, so I'm going to go alpha equals 0 0.05. But this would be for a right tail test. I don't want that. Instead, I want to go to alpha up here equals 0.95. And I find myself 12.338. So this is 12.338 is equal to our, um, let's call that chi naught squared. And what, what the table did is it gave you 0.95. The table gave you 0.95 here, and then there was just 0.05 left there. So the, using this table is a bit different than the rest of them. Now, let me go ahead and calculate the test statistic and see where it falls. So there's our cutoff region, 12.338. Chi squared equals n minus 1, s squared over sigma squared. n was 23, so we have 23 minus 1. s, the sample standard deviation was 7.45. Well, it's 7.45 squared, actually, the sample variance. And the proposed population variance is 8.5. So I don't have to square these. They were already squared before I did this. Uh, and let's go ahead and calculate these numbers. And for this, I'll get about 19.282. And let's see where that falls at. If this is actually outside of the shaded region, so that means we fail to reject H naught. Now let's redo the same problem, but with p-values. Now if you recall, for those things, we calculate the chi-squared first. And we also make sure that we note that it's a left tail test. So what we do then is we see chi squared equals 282. Now I know that my degrees of freedom was 23 minus 1, which equals 22. So let me go to that table and look for row 22, and then try to find this number in that row. So let's pop into there. Row 22. Okay, now I need 19.28, so I'm trying to find that in here. In here, you see it? It's greater than 4.0042 and 30.813. So let me write that down. Let me recreate a little bit of the table here for a minute. What we had was this. What this means is this is like a left endpoint and this is like a right endpoint. And what we're doing is since our number is between these two, if I look just at this one, this says the amount of area to the right of it is more than 0 0.10 since my value what is it, 19.282 is between these two. I know that my alpha is bigger than, point, or well, the p-value, which equals the area to the right of this thing, is bigger than 0.1. So if I were to draw a picture, I know that 
the 30 has 0 0.1 in there. And my chi-squared is a little bit less than that. It, it's over here somewhere, right? So my p-value is all of this. So my p is the entire area. So I can see that p is greater than, uh, well, 0 0.1. And the alpha in this example was actually just 0 0.05. 0 0.1 is greater than 0 0.05, so there's no question P is greater than 0 0.05, and that implies that we fail to reject H0. All right, another example. The claim looks like this. The claim is sigma squared, the population variance, is greater than 19. And what is our sample? Here, the sample stand up, the sample variance is 28, and n equals 17. And we want to test the claim. at alpha equals 0 0.1. So first, the classical method. And for that, we try to figure out the rejection regions. Well, let me first put my H sub 0 and my H sub A. My H sub 0 well, actually, the claim was in H sub A because it has a strictly greater than symbol. So that's the claim. And not only that, we know that it's a right-tailed test. So the other one, we have to reverse the inequality but put in equals for the other portion of it. So sigma squared is less than or equal to 19. And now let's go ahead and use our alpha equals 0 0.1. Our degrees of freedom will equal 17 minus 1, so that's 16. And we'll use the chi-squared table like I did. And let's see what we have. So 16.1. Good. 16. It looks like I have 23.542. And you saw it, the alpha was equal to 0.1. So here's what we have. That was 0 0.1, and this cutoff region was 23.542. Now let's calculate our chi-squared statistic. We will get n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared. And so let's see, n minus 1 is 16. s squared, what's the s? That was 28 for s squared. And O, or I said O, sigma squared 19. This is approximately equal to 23.579. And it looks like, I think my picture, I need a little more space, but it is inside of there. It's a little bit bigger than that 23.542. So we reject H sub zero. And if I redo with p-values, we start with the test, or, well, with the computation of chi-squared. And we got approximately 23.579. So then you'll go in the table, let's see, 23.579, 
Remember, the degrees of freedom was 16. So 23.579 is between two values in the table, the 23.542. And the other value in the table uh, was 26.296. And what we saw above that, if you look at the top, the headers on those columns, let me go, that was alpha was 0.1 or 0.05. And those were alpha values up there. Our number is in between these. So our number that we want, this guy right here, is somewhere inside of here. That means the p-value is between 0.1 and 0 0.05. So 0 0.1 is greater than p, but p is also greater than 0 0.05. Now let me check my alpha. Alpha is equal to 0 0.1. So alpha is greater than P. That implies that we reject H0. Let me do one last example that involves an equal sign so that you could see what happens when we have to cut it into two regions. So for my last example, I'm going to use my claim is sigma equals 24.9 and my sample we have the sample standard deviation was 29.1 and that was with n equal 51 and we want to test the claim at alpha equals 0 0.1. As usual, the classical method comes first. And start with our h sub 0 is that sigma equals 24.9. That means that h sub a is that sigma does not equal 24.9. So we see that we have, well, it, it's not a right or left tail test. It's a both tail test. This was the claim. So this is two tailed. Now let's go ahead and use our alpha equals 0 0.1, but you need to divide it into just like before. And now when you look at the table, I'm going to be looking for two values. I'll show you how they look. My critical regions will look like this. So I'll, I'll do two of them here. I'll have one that's over here. We'll call this chi squared sub L. And then I'll have one on the right, chi squared sub R. So for the chi squared sub L, remember we want a 0 0.05 to be in there. Let me take this out for a moment. If that's there, that means a 0 0.95 is to the right. So when you go to look at the table, for that, we're going to use alpha equals a 0 0.05, but the degrees of freedom, what was our sample? It was 51. So we're, degrees of freedom is 51 minus 1, so that's 50. Now let's go ahead and look at the table itself. So I'm going to go to row 50. I've got my row 50 and I want to look at 0.95 because there's 0.95 to the right. So 50.95, I get 34.764. That means that that spot right there is 34.764. That's the left. Now I'm also going to want to do one on the right since it is two tailed. So we're also going to do this. And I'm also going to slice this off. And that area in there is 0 0.05. Now, when you use the table for this one, you're going to look up under the column that is 0 0.05. Call it chi squared r. And let's see what the table tells us. Okay, so 50. And now i got to go to the right, 0 0.05. 
So that gave you 67.505. So basically the picture is just like this. Put these together to form one picture and here's your cutoff regions. I get 67.505. And the other cutoff region was 37, 34.764. Now let's go ahead and calculate our statistic and see what we get. That's n minus 1, s squared over sigma squared. Be careful because you were not given sigma squared, you were given sigma and s. s was 29.1, so you have to do 29.1, but you got to square it. And then sigma was 24.9. Square it. And let's see what we get when all is said and done. To two decimal places, I get 68.29. And we can see based on this that it is in this region here. So since it's in a critical region, we reject H0. And then to finish off this video, let's go ahead and redo the last example. P-values. So, and, and this way, as you've seen a bunch of times, we calculate that by first calculating the test statistic. And that came out to be 68.29. Now our alpha, not alpha, I don't care about the alpha, um, we need the degrees of freedom is 50. So we're going to use the chi-squared table and try to find this number in there if we can. Otherwise, it's going to be between two numbers on the table. So let's go to the table, degrees of fifth degrees of freedom is 50 and it was 68.29 as suspected it's between two values here the 67.505 and the other one the other value it was between was 71.420 So our 68.29, this guy right here, is in the middle of those two. Now on top of it, let me get my alpha values that were up there. Um, here's alpha equals 0 0.05 and alpha equals 0 Now, just like the alpha regions, you break up the p regions in two. What that means is my p value is between, well, actually half of the p value is between these two values. So I know that 0 0.025 is less than half of p. Remember, you break it into two equal pieces because you're doing a two tailed test, and 0 0.05. Now, I'll multiply everything through by two, so I'll get 0 0.05 is less than p is less than 0 0.1. Well, 0 0.1 is equal to alpha. So we have that P is less than alpha, which means we reject H naught.